This is Ray's Magnetic Circuitry, Part 4. And I call it Field Shaping. I have a arm. I have a magnet design. It's my latest and most powerful. I can freely engage and disengage. The whole purpose of this design is to show an over-unity effect. That is what my research is doing for over-unity. And of course you can make up your own mind. Also I have a set up here I call it a flapper. And this is one that I you have a magnet that's on an arm and it can flap freely. When it goes forward, it fires. That's the north facing side. When it fires, it puts a torque on a small motor generator. It's one half inch in width. The rotor would be a quarter inch. That's where the torque is produced, which generates the voltage and current to my bank of five flashlights, each one having nine LEDs, a total of 45. Okay, we have it ready to fire. So I'll take my trigger and remove it. That'll allow the flapper to react and turn the little motor generator producing a force. If you go back to number one and two and even three, uh, the lights do not fire that brightly. And what's the action? So what we need to do is just take a force reading for the disengage and then take a force reading of the engage. We'll do that first. I have a ounce gauge and you can see the bottom there. It's on the right side of the ounces. The zero at the bottom. Okay. It is already fired. So we're going to disengage it. We'll take a reading for the disengagement force. And see that's very, very small. I'll go ahead and put my trigger in. I do not want my flapper to fire until I'm ready. So I'll take my ounce gauge and we'll measure the force to engage it. You can see that was very, very small. Okay, let's go ahead and see if it will fire the LEDs, 45 of them. So we was able to measure the input and the output, which I call the disengage and engage, very, very, very low. And yet, with that very small force, how in the world are we able to light 45 LEDs with a pretty good brightness? Well, the next factor would be measuring the force of the flapper. So, the little motor generator, it's a 20, 22 to 1 ratio. They're hard to find, but uh, if you find something like that, it'll work. So it's a quarter inch for the radius where the torque is uh, 
converted over to mechanical electrical energy. So I put a quarter inch uh, mark there on my flapper and that represents the quarter inch radius of the motor generator. So let's go ahead. Uh, if I have uh, nothing almost like I did the, the engage and disengage, then I have no case for over unity. But if I have something obviously more powerful here, then there may be something to this. Okay. It's already showing what, four, six, eight, ten. Eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. I think that did it. Uh, fourteen. Right there. Okay, let's see what that was. And twelve. Fourteen. Yes, almost fourteen. You can hear it. About thirteen. Let's go 12, somewhere in that range. Anyhow, much, much greater. If you put that into a ratio, uh, that'd be a 12 over. If you even had one for engage and disengage, which I did not see one, I might have a half an ounce or something like that. But uh, if you even had one ounce for the uh, engage and disengage, that'd be a, a 12 uh, to 1 ratio. And if you think that the uh, generators that they have on the market for conventional, uh, they're like, what, 30, 40, 50, 60 percent uh, efficiency. If you have 100 percent efficiency, that's 1 over 1. That's 100 percent. This is showing uh, a 1,200 percent. So uh, I think that's uh, pretty substantial. And, of course, there's other little factors, the distance of pushing it and so forth. But uh, it's pretty obvious something is going on here. I'll give you some of the uh, measurements here. The Between the flapper magnet, when it's uh, down in its down position, it's about three-quarter inch between here and there. You can get it down to half if you want to, but... And a little bit more input uh, for your disengage and engage. So somewhere around there. So let's go ahead and I want to show you what this design. You can see this has a pack of magnets. I have a bar in the middle. I'll show you the, the uh, diagram here in a little bit. But uh, this is a new design. Very, very powerful. Okay. It works on a... Uh, Field shaping, the magnetic field shaping uh, component that I've been working on. And we can see here that when we have, say, a pack of magnets, and we hold, we hold our compass, if we get it there. So there's the south, here's your north, here's your south, here's your north. So the north is uh, right there at the junction there. So what happens when we put a bar of metal, I have it set up for the next example here. 
there will be a field shaping event taking place. The south end will still read there, but now the north, instead of being there, it continues out to the end of the bar. The north field has been shifted with the metal. So we have this area here is uh, weaker north, but the stronger uh, concentrated field is right there. Okay, Let's go ahead and see what would happen if we put two magnets. Okay, The south will be the same. But now, instead of being at the very end, it is back towards the middle. And then for our last example there, I don't think I have enough magnets there on it, but that'll give us the idea, I think. We have our south still being down in that area, but now the north is pretty much in the middle. So we have a north and a north facing each other. I don't have any problem with that. If you have uh, north and north magnets and you force them together, that can do damage. But we have a buffer. Right there is a buffer. And it gives the uh, both norths facing each other room in between to kind of simulate and to uh, gather their forces so they're not... Uh, forcing each other to, uh, where it's damaging. So it gives a kind of a uh, give and take in there. So I don't have any problem with the north and north. And what that does, it brings the concentrated force right there. And that's where my flapper is flapping towards. That strong area. And uh, so that's the reason I did that. Okay, we'll watch the action one more time and uh, give you the diagram. This is raised magnetic circuitry, part four, field shaping. We're actually shaping the uh, fields to the advantage where it works for us in my over-unity research. Okay. Okay. You see now we have no, we are not engaged. So we'll go ahead. We know now that there's very, very little force to engage it. So let's see. You see that? About 14 ounces, 12 ounces we had. It's up in there. So this is my strongest uh, design yet. Okay. Hope you enjoyed this. And until next time, if you'd like to visit my, buy me a coffee, I appreciate that too. Hey, happy inventing.